Hi, what is this? Oh, hey, boomers, if you have questions with quality, post it on our subreddit, no matter your entity. I may or may not check it in the next episode of Flat ET. 220 volt generator from battery? <laughs> That's cute! He's switching a battery over some transformer to generate high voltage? <laughs> Maybe I should give that a try. If you have these old transformer wall adapters, don't throw them into garbage. You can always harvest the transformer out of it. Like this guy here that steps down 120 volts to 12 volts. Uh, we don't need the rectifier and capacitor though, we disconnect it. So to create 120 volts from 12 volts, we just have to flip the usage of the primary and secondary. <laughs> Actually, can I connect 120 volts to the secondary of this thing and get over 2000 volts on the other side? Let's give it a try. <laughs> Uh, the much smaller inductance of the secondary doesn't allow it to be used on 60 Hz 120 volts without explosion. So what we do is we switch a voltage on the lower voltage side of the transformer at much higher frequencies. For example, I'm going to touch the transformer with a 1.5 volt battery momentarily and... Look at that! I got a spike well over 600 volts just from a one and a half volt battery. One spike is not enough, though, is it? I'm going to create continuous spikes out of the transformer by using a relay, unlike the guy did in the video. Ah, Damn it, chair! And I can normally close to one side of the relay coil. The other side of the coil goes to ground, I guess. Battery positive goes to the common. Oh, switching already. Before that, connect the normally open to the transformer. The other side of the transformer connects to ground. Probably have to slow it down. Add the capacitor across the coil. And now, oh, switching slower. And with the transform, ow! We get huge oscillations and spikes of over 1000 volts. I connected a diode and capacitor to that output to rectify it and you see we have a DC voltage. 70 volts? Yes. Ow! What the? Ooh. My capacitor is super alright. It's only 16 volts. Thank god it didn't blow up. <laughs> Here's a 400 volt capacitor. And with that we get... Oh my god, look at that! It's 160, 170. Let's discharge it before getting shocked. Ooh. Can I run a lamp with it now? Let's see if it turns on. Oh, momentarily. Oh, the voltage drops quickly under load. For it to properly work, you need a much faster switching frequency in tens of kilohertz and a control circuit to make sure you regulate the output voltage. Otherwise, things will blow up. But this was a good proof of concept. And without the rectification, you can use the high voltage pulses to shock your friends. Eh, they'll be fine since your friends are imaginary. The glowing outlet. So much arcing in the wall. I have a feeling if we zoom out, we'll see a bigger picture. Mehdi average day. <laughs> I'm so cute. Now what? <laughs> well, that's dangerous, you can't touch that thing now. Yeah, just put it back, maybe... Oh. <laughs> Absolute exposure. <laughs> but yeah, some crappy made wall adapters can fail like that, be careful. Take a look at this bull. What is he trying to make now? So he's putting some nails in the plastic pipes. Shove some wires in there to connect to the nails. Hot glues the end of the wires to the battery. What now? <laughs> <laughs> wow! You make this and take it with you to your outdoor wildlife winter adventure to make fire and get warm and then you freeze to death because this is fake! Here's a fresh double A battery and wires and there are no sparks! There's a tiny bit of smoke though. It's getting warm. It doesn't output enough energy for sparks! If you use this method to create fire and you froze to death, you might have a case against that guy. And he thought nobody would ask about this sketchy gap between his fingers where the actual wire is running. Siemens high voltage DC transformer with a capacity of 12,000 megawatts. Dang, these stuff are cool. I want to see one of these from up close and you know, test it. All the details and considerations for the high voltages not to arc. That's why these things are so huge. They have to keep high voltages apart. Look at those tiny people under it. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. A ton of engineering that goes into these things. I barely know anything, don't I? I love transformers. 
Wow, you and I both, brother. <laughs> I guess we are the weirdos that go out at sunrise or sunset and take picture of transformers. Light turning on with pile. With a pile of what? Oh, with a battery? Who calls a battery a pile? Are you 100 years old? Oh, zero upvotes. Why am I looking at this? I'm just speechless. Electric ink, over 100,000 volts of experience. <laughs> well, I mean, that's how we measure our level of experience in electrical business. If you can survive that much voltage, you are clearly an expert. 90 microfarad, 200 volt capacitor bank. Yum. Magic sponges? I'm just trying to cut sponges. And they will not... What the f <laughs> It's magic. Like, please. What a cute little sponge. Here I have a foam and a styrofoam and rubbing them against each other, I create static electricity due to tribal electric effects. So I rub these two together and I have a smaller piece of foam I cut off. I rub on this and now if I try to put this on top of that, whoop, whoop, they repel each other because they are the same charge. But this wants to stick to this one because they are opposite charges. I guess we knew that, didn't we? Saw this on TikTok and wondering if it actually works. What is this? Oh, you put two clips in a pipe and some balls and aluminum foil, two clips, and it does that. I'd like to try it. We got a piece of hose, make a tiny ball out of aluminum foil, put the ball in the hose, put some paper clips on each side, and I suppose it looks like this. Let's test it. We charge the surface of the styrofoam. Now, we get no motion. Motion, please. There's nothing. We should be avoiding any sharp edges inside the tube. What if I put the back of two nails inside like this? Okay, I got some foams. I'm gonna pass the nail through it. This is to hold the nail in the hose. Like this. Show me some motion. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, it's moving. <laughs> Well, the charge is going away on the surface. Let me try it with my Vandograph. There we go. Hey, it works from far too. Not bad. What the Chinese? Oh, sh Although the Chinese version felt unreasonably strong. Maybe they had a Vandograph hiding behind the curtain. <laughs> and of course, the science behind it is that the ball gets attracted to the charges, picks them up and repels from the same charges and then gets attracted to the opposing charges on my hand, jumps to my hand, loses its charges and the cycle repeats again. Mehdi is no longer 45, he's 48 now. <laughs> they adjusted the angle. Only 42 left to become 90 degrees. I wanna do it at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 90 would be the simplest, but any angle before before that would be pretty hard. Let's exercise my neck muscles. How about visiting Bangladesh? <laughs> so much wire. They'll be super pissed when they hear about wireless technology. This is the type of place where Ultron rises out of. This is one place where Kirchhoff's law doesn't apply. That's why you call it Bangladesh. This seems suspicious, but I can't put my burnt finger on it. Just place a razor blade on the burnt out LED bulb and it will work perfectly again. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. This incredible secret was discovered by an electrician. Discovered by an electrician. So he has a defective light bulb, and the reason it's broken is because one of the LEDs is burned out. Remove all the excess from the burnt out LED. We're gonna need an old razor blade. Why would you use a razor blade to fix it though? Any like a aluminum foil would be fine. And then just place the piece of the razor blade that we cut. Then position it directly on top of the contact where we remove the burnt out. And that's the worst way to repair it. As you can see, it really works. It works now, but a tape on a hot surface, it's gonna fly off or get loose and disconnect. And here's my fridge's broken LED light bulb. And judging by the plastic around it, I already tried to fix it. And if you look carefully here, I tried to repair it properly too by removing the LED and soldering instead of just slapping some piece of metal on it. Since all the LEDs are typically in series, we should be able to find out which one is broken if that's in fact the problem by shorting across the LED. Hey, just so you know, if you're doing this and your body is touching the ground, the AC current can run through the tweezers through your body and you'll get electrocuted. So don't be touching the ground or AC lines or anything of that sort. There you go. 
So this LED is broken. So this LED broke first and this one broke first. Now you can take this LED out and short across it as well or just replace those LEDs with LEDs from a healthy light bulb, which is not only, I mean, why would you try to destroy a healthy light bulb? But it is very hard to remove these LEDs in one piece and don't break them because they are sitting on a heat sink and it's very hard to heat them and remove the LED. So I guess we can short this one as well. Try to break it off the board. Try to solder across this one, which is quite hard to do. There you go. Two more LEDs left in this. How long do you think they will last? Since I cut this plastic before, I weld it back together. Yep. The issue with this type of repair is that your LED may continue breaking even quicker depending on the type of driver you have in it. If the driving circuit is a fixed current source, then the remaining LEDs can't tell the difference and will be fine. But if it is more like a fixed voltage type of thing, then the fewer LEDs means more current through all of them, which puts more stress on them and they'll blow quicker. Plug faster to garage door slides into outlet. What is going on? Oh, the guy fastened the plug to the... Oh, it's going to align with the outlet. Oh my God, go, go, go! <laughs> the joy. <laughs> fuse for an electric chair? Wow, that's a huge fuse. That's not gonna save anybody. Although it is an electric chair, you don't really wanna save anybody. Why would you even have a fuse for an electric chair? Except maybe for fires. Balloon goes into power line. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, those balloons are oh. kind of conductive, oh, made of know? some sort of metal. Oh, right Aluminum, tomorrow. perhaps? Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you see that? Let me show you frame by frame. Look at this. When the balloon shorts the power lines, the breaker pops open. <laughs> That's one way of testing power lines in different countries. At home nuclear reactor. This product is gonna revolutionize. Yeah, I've seen this before. It's industry. fake. This is supposedly an egg with a thermonuclear power reactor inside of it that's supposed to like keep your power running for many years. Of course, it is impossible as is. You can't contain the whole thing in an egg. The way those power generators work is that the nuclear material heats up, you pour water in it, water turns into steam, creates steam pressure. The steam pressure runs some turbine and generates electricity and the rest of the steam goes out. Something must be coming out of that egg. If nothing comes out of it, it just keeps heating up, up, up and blows up and you would have another Fukushima on your hand. Would be nice if there was a way though. What is this? Something is shorting and arcing? What is this I saved a while back? He's the king of sparks with the grin on his face Making circuits dance in the wildest embrace With a sobering iron and a heart full of zest He's electro boom putting theory to the test Man, it's our da da the man of the hour Shocking himself with electronic power from <laughs> It's beautiful. And it's I the dark, the man of the hour. Good job, Victor Media GR. Nice batch. Thank you. Keep them coming.